Do you think all this is exaggerated by the media? I can give Absolutely. you an example. I wasn't planning on going here, but why not? Why not? If you read a lot of literature in, let's say, the New York Times, the Washington Post, even the Wall Street Journal, they will talk about the fact that there are these unbridgeable gaps in the country. Pro-Trump, anti-Trump, racial gaps for sure. According to what you read in the paper, blacks and whites just ain't talking to each other at all. They're strictly yelling at one another or avoiding each other. My actual personal experience is that that's simply not true. True. I except now I'm going to utter something which will have me canceled, except I don't worry about being canceled <laughs> because I don't, I'm not on a pedestal that you can take me off of. I'm just on the ground. But ready? Yeah. Ready to hear something that you absolutely are forbidden from saying? Yeah. Over the course of my life, here it is. This is the eye ruler of all time. Some of my best friends have been people of color. Okay, in America, you can't say that without, oh, God, he's virtue signaling. Yeah. He's performative, whatever. So you read the literature in the papers, and you think, we're all at each other's throats. Except in my neighborhood, I walk my dog with these arch Republicans who are pro-Trump, which I happen not to be, or with people of a different race, and we're all just fine. What we say to people in this situation is stop reading the papers. <laughs> no, it's serious. Seriously. Yep. Seriously. It's not representative of the world out there. No, it's not. It's not. We're being yeah, manipulated, obviously, because it's, it's not real. You're not only drinking the Kool-Aid, you're yeah. marinated in it. Yeah. I mean, if you watch and you read every single newspaper and you watch every single news item, you will be depressed. That's the result. Fear sells. Fear All right. sells. Fear sells. But fear is the quintessential element of a mental health problem. Love is the opposite, though, and that's what gets you out. That's when we go into workplaces, we have the compassion. I, look, I'm one of the most imperfect human beings in the world. I have done it all. I've done depression, I've done anxiety attacks, I've had suicide ideation, I've, I've had it all. I, was, I, I come from the most negative uh, <laughs> thinking family intergenerationally that can ever be possible. We were so good at negative thinking. So I had to relearn this technique. So I have complete compassion and love for people, even though I don't know them, because I understand how horrible and that suffering is and how isolating and loneliness, lonely, it's very lonely. Even if you're not lonely, it can separate you from your friends. It can separate you from your family. So my whole life is dedicated to putting a stop to that, to helping people get out of that hole. How can, why can, can I help them get out of, of the hole? It's because I was in it and I climbed myself out of it. So I know the techniques. Plus, I've got the academic background to, to also understand it. Mm -hmm. So that combo, yeah. together with, with Emmy and, and our team. And our team. That's and we're I, very we're selective with our team. <laughs> no, we're not American, but we've got Amer an American team here, which are workplace mental health specialists that are uh, cherry picked by us to make sure that they have the right approach to mental health. It's about what you focus on. Yes. Potential objections to working with you. Number one, what if somebody says, you are uh, opening Pandora's box, okay? It's not our job to take care of the mental health of every single individual here. Thank you, but no. I would say that yes, it potentially, I will a mental health cause could open Pandora's box in a workplace, but not ours. Ours don't do that because we come from a strength perspective. We don't come from a victim perspective. So when you come from a strength perspective, what you're doing is making people more resilient, not opening Pandora's box. You were jumping to say something. Oh, I was going to say, in a workplace, too late. Pandora's box is already open. <laughs> it's here. You got to deal with it. And you want it dealt with properly, like Peter said. Exactly. Are you going to make my employees weak? That's Absolutely the opposite not. of what we're trying to do. <laughs> That's the opposite of what we do. <laughs> we're building strength. We're building resilience. Stronger, more powerful employees get better results for you. And by the way, we do it in the course itself. People You're in the course, people right there and then? Right there and then. Right there and then. Because they go through the psychological tools 
that we use to make people resilient. Tools, so you're not just talking about awareness? No, 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 that's, no. We need more than awareness, so to be aware, what then? <laughs> now we're what aware, do do? we're talking about it, we're aware. What do I say? This is what people need. In other words, to quote one of my famous, my favorite lines from the movie Taken, you're gonna offer them a very particular set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right, that's exactly right. <laughs> what about the cost of doing this? Joel, what people don't understand is what is the cost of not doing this? We know. We do know. They've found that for every person with depression, it's costing $10,000. In a workplace of 100 people, you're going to have, statistically speaking, six people with depression. We're up to 60000 A course costs a lot less than that. <laughs> Abraham Maslow, the psychologist Abraham Maslow, did something not only innovative, but like revolutionary man, as we would say in California. He studied healthy people. Freud, others studied sick people mm. and labeled the sickness. Maslow went, I want to look at people who are doing really well in life yes. and find out what we need to learn from. And he came up with this, I believe, hierarchy of needs is his, right. is his phrase. Viktor Frankl, yeah. who survived Auschwitz yep. and other concentration mm. camps, wrote man's search for meaning. Yes. They may disagree on certain things, but I think they would both agree on it's a matter of what you focus on, which is not you're in denial, mm -hmm. but what do you bring first and foremost to your attention? Absolutely. Agreed? I think they yeah. had it right. <clears throat> they had it. Yes. So do you change a corporation's focus and the focus of the leaders Absolutely. and the, the staff. Members. That's exactly what we do. We teach them how to be, make better meanings. We have the, the tools, the psychological tools that guide people one, two, three, four. And we and just did some of these exercises two days ago with these 300 people from the yeah. Mental Health Authority. Um, and it was amazing how many people came back and said, I can't believe that just by changing the meaning, I can change the result and I have solutions to my problems. That's the kind of workforce you want, not the workforce that needs a teddy bear. And to conclude, that's what you mean by mental wealth. Wealth yes. being access to resources, correct? Yes, absolutely. That's yes, what wealth exactly. is, access to a lot of resources. Yes, but we're Choices. not talking about huge amounts of money either. We're talking about personal resources Understood. and systemic resources. Understood. Yeah. All right. For bringing your personal resources to this wonderful conversation. I truly have to thank you both. Thank you, Joel. Thank, you, thank you both. It's a pleasure. I'm Joel Roberts. I hope you've enjoyed our exchange. Until next time. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.